So we're just gonna run through fitting a bandsaw blade on your machine. This is a, a key thing that a lot of people struggle with. So it's really important that you know how to set your bandsaw up correctly to get maximum best results for your cutting out of the machine. Whenever you're doing any work on your machine, first thing is make sure you've unplugged the machine and you're not connected to any power. So we've got our blade off here. So first thing is we fit our blade onto the machine. So you remove this pin which sits in the table first, bring it around the bar and we'll go into the slot here. We'll just sort of sit it over the top here. Then you've got a thin groove down between the doors. That's where your blade slides in through there. Fit your blades onto the, both the wheels. Now we want to set, set it on the bottom so it's sitting roughly in the middle of the bandsaw tire. And on the top we're going to do the same too. Some bandsaws, uh, more the older traditional ones, have got uh, thick um, vulcanized rubber around them and the rubber is flat. On those bandsaw tires, we generally set the teeth of the blade just sitting forward, hanging over the front of the blade. For these bandsaws, we've got a convex rubber tire on it, so we can set the blade into the middle. So bring it into the middle here. You can look through the window on the side if it does help. And then we wanna set our tension. So we'll bring our tension up. We can adjust from here and we want to just make sure that is still sitting in the middle of the machine on the top and the bottom wheel. Just loosen it a little bit. On the side, on the inside here, we've got a tensioning device. So depending on the thickness of our blade, we set this needle pointing to it. And then that way we know that we've tensioned up our blade correctly. A little bit more. Okay, so we want to move all our guides completely out of the way on the top and on the bottom. And then what we're going to do is check if the belt, the blade is tracking correctly on the machine, on the wheels. So we can slowly rotate this. We want to have a look and see how the blade is tracking. So it's sort of pulled to the back a little bit. So what we're going to do is adjust on the back of the machine. There's a locking knob. Basically, that this top wheel can pivot like this. So we can either push it out or push it in, depending on which way the belt is tracking. So if it was rolling towards the back of the machine, it's tilted too far back. So we want to then pull it back around and vice versa, if it's going rolling off the front, we wanna pull that around this way. So we loosen off the lock knot at the back and we can adjust that. So you can see the wheel is tilting backwards or forwards depending. So you can see I'm adjusting this and it's pulling that out, which will then make the blade go towards the back. If we wanna go the other way, we loosen it, that'll pull the blade in and then it will now track towards the front. And then we just slowly spin by hand the, the drive roller or the wheels till we get the blade tracking exactly where we want it to be. Obviously, you just be very careful when you are spinning this with your fingers. So you just spin it nice and gently till we can see it's tracking nicely in the middle and then we can go ahead and lock that off. A little tip is if, when you are doing your resawing and your cutting, if it is drifting towards the right, that can mean that your blade is too far forward. So therefore the blade is slightly twisted out and drifting towards the right. If it's drifting towards the left, then it can be that the blade is sitting too far back and therefore it's drifting towards that way there. Uh, once you have got it tracking nicely, just recheck your blade tension because it can adjust a little bit once you've started adjusting that toe in and toe out on the top wheel. So you obviously got your gauge down the bottom here and you can also generally feel by the springiness of the blade how it's going. The next step will be close all the doors and the covers.
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the machine on and just pulse it for a second or so, just to see how it's tracking. If it looks good, then we'll run it for a little bit longer. Just remember to always wear your safety glasses when you are turning in, on the machine and using it. So we'll put them on. If you've got a hat like mine, you can turn on your little LED lights. So what we're gonna do is just turn the machine on for a few seconds, on and off, and watch how the blade tracks. So I'll just turn that on. So it's rolling towards the front a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen this off on the back, adjust it out a bit, and go a bit more. Tiny bit more. So you wanna look through your viewing glass and then you can see which way the blade is riding. So it's a little bit forward. I'm gonna just slowly adjust this and you can see the blade is coming back a little bit. I'll do it quite a bit so you can see it really move. You can see the blade is starting to roll towards the back. So we just adjust that till it's nice in the center of the blade, uh, in the center of the drive wheel. And then that looks pretty good. We'll lock it off. It's been running for a few minutes or so and it seems to be tracking nicely. So then we can turn the machine off. So now that we've got our blade tracking correctly, we can adjust our guides so they're set correctly. So there's a few things we need to do. First of all, we need to adjust the position of these side bearings in relation to the blade. So we don't want to set it so they're obviously over the teeth. Otherwise, if we do that, when we start the machine, it'll damage the set on the blade. The set is the angle of the teeth. They're crisscross from each other. And if we put the roller right next to it, it'll damage that and your blade's no good. So we want to set it so it's holding on the blade nice uh, nice and securely. So you want to be holding as much of the blade as possible, but without holding the teeth. So we sort of want to see about three quarters. If we loosen off on the back here, we can slide this in and out. And what I'm looking at on the side here is the position that this bearing in relation to the blade. So what I'm looking at is where the bearing sits in relation to the blade. So I want to set it about here. So it's about three quarters on the blade. And then I lock that off and that is our position forwards where we're gonna set it. So the next thing we wanna adjust is our back thrust bearing. We'll just move this lever out of the way. If you can pull it out and then it's on a spring to move it out of position. Back, set this back thrust bearing. Now, the way we set it is we bring it up to just touching the blade and then release a little bit. What we want it to do is when the machine is running, we don't want this bearing to move. If this bearing starts move, is, is spinning with the blade running with no pressure on it, then it's too close. Ideally, we want it so as soon as we apply pressure to the blade, it then starts to um, spin that back bearing, and then we know that we've got that set correctly. When we release, then the bearing's not touching. So you have a look from sort of the sides, and you want that just not to be touching. So now we're gonna do our side thrust bearings, and there's a few different ways that people set these, but ideally you want about a business card thickness between the blade and the bearing itself. So we bring it over again. I like to bring it over till it's just touching and then pull it off a little bit. And then same with the other one, just touching and then release it a bit and then just check that from the front. So bring that over and you can see it's not touching the blade but it's very, very close. Same with this one here. Bring that over till it's just not touching. So it's free spinning and then we've got, it's now keeping the blade fairly straight. So we repeat the same process on the bottom here. Uh, so we've got this kip lever here, which if we loosen off, it will move it backwards and forwards the guide. So again, we set it so it's about three quarters of the way on the blade. So we set our back thrust bearing the same way we set the front one. We just bring it up till it's just touching the blade and then release a little bit. Again, we want a very small amount there. So when the blade's spinning, it's not spinning the blade. And then we do the same with our side here. Bring that over to the business card thickness. So we set that up nice and close. And then now we can run our machine and do a check and make sure the bearings aren't spinning. So we'll shut the doors. And now we're gonna run our, our machine and just see how it's tracking. So everything looks pretty good. We can see that the bearings are not spinning. 
So you can see that our back bearing isn't spinning. Once we apply pressure and start the cut, that should start to spin with the blade. And then we check the bottom as well to make sure that that's the same. So we check these here too, to make sure that they're not spinning and that they're nice and close to the blade. And then we start doing our test cut and you can tweak it a little bit from here. But once you set it correctly, it should be fairly right. But it is important that you take the time to set your bandsaws up correctly because if you don't set the blades up correctly, it'll give you nothing, nothing but grief and you won't be happy with how the machine's performing. So that's setting up your bandsaw blade. Uh, you will need to adjust it every time you do put a new bandsaw blade on the machine. Even if it's the same width and same teeth, you still need to double check it because all the blades are different. So we've demonstrated that on this BS 350D bandsaw. And the same principle applies to any of the wood fast range or really any bandsaw out in the market. Take your time to set it correctly, learn your machine and you'll really enjoy it and uh, get the most out of your bandsaw. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again next time. Cheers.